tremendous. We went over yesterday afternoon to Dal High Stadium and watched these uh, youngsters who are now down here on all sides of the stadium. They're uh, college girls and high school boys and girls from all parts of the state of Texas. Uh, they won their right to come here to the Cotton Bowl and perform today by dint of very, very uh, serious and strenuous co uh, contests. There are five bands and the Rangerettes, uh, 55 young ladies from Kilgore College in Kilgore, Texas. Uh, the bands who won the right to come to the Cotton Bowl this year and were informed uh, several months ago and have been rehearsing very hard ever since that time is a band from Pine Tree High School in Gregston, Texas. Mr. Ed Lumpkin is the director of that group. The band from Robert E. Lee High School, uh, Baytown, Texas, down on the Gulf Coast. J.C. Burkett is the director, and they're coming into position down here right now. Uh, San Angelo High School Band of San Angelo, Texas. Uh, Homer Anderson is the director of this group. The Hooks High School Band from Hooks, Texas. Norman White, director. Uh, Lubbock High School's band is uh, down here in the Cotton Bowl this year. Paul Branham is the director of that group. And the Ranger Band from Kilgore College, Kilgore, Texas, Major H.L. Walker is the director. And those Rangerettes that we told you about. Uh, 55 young ladies from Kilgore College down Kilgore, Texas. They uh, right now are arranging themselves down here in various musical groups. They're going to give us a little, uh, a little music lesson down here, we're told. The color is really beautiful to see because they all have uh, different colored uniforms, and there are literally uh, several thousand of these youngsters. They have now formed down here a musical staff with the treble clef, and uh, the public address announcer is saying, this is a whole note, and they play the whole note. Now a whole group is moving down the musical staff, and they're going to play the tone D. Here they come again, moving down in their black and uh, yellow uniforms. The band plays the note C. Now they're going back to join with their fellows, half of whom were on the far side of the stadium. You must understand that the diagrams for all of this were uh, made up months ago. We're told that uh, this halftime entertainment here today actually is costing about $1,000 a minute. And these youngsters have put in really thousands of man hours of work to make this wonderful display for the people here in the Cotton Bowl today. Now the two groups forming two notes are moving down to play two more notes. Playing three blind mice is what they played very slowly, and now they're playing it. And the announcer says that now you can read music, and really it was a very uh, graphic illustration, too. Well, the show uh, goes on down here uh, in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, believe me, it is a colorful exhibition, and as I mentioned at the outset here of the halftime, uh, one of the features of the Cotton Bowl, the entertainment at halftime, is one of the big things, and uh, in spite of the wonderful ball games they have here in the Cotton Bowl, the fans really go for this, too. Sitting alongside of me here right now is a gentleman who has been covering Cotton Bowl games, I guess, ever since they started. Isn't that right, Bill? Well, I've been uh, either here or uh, close by, I'll say. Yeah, either here or close by. I'm talking about Bill Reeves, uh, who is the sports editor of the Dallas Morning News and is also the president of the American Football Writers Association of America. How long do you hold a job like that, Bill? Well, Bob, usually they throw you out after one year. They... They catch on to you within the space of a year, you see, and then they, then they throw you out. Mm -hmm. You're a little happier at halftime? Well, of course, at halftime two years ago, we were pretty happy here in Texas. Yes, that's too. right. I'm sitting next to a, a newspaper man down there in the lower level of the press box from Austin, and he's, uh, he's very, still very nervous. He says, I remember two years ago, so I'm not uh, comfortable yet. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no doubt about it. This Tennessee team certainly has more both on offense and defense than they uh, showed here in the first half. Well, I think so. However, I do believe that the uh, Texas defense has been uh, underrated. There's been so much talk about their offense, and they have uh, uh, a very fine defense, actually, and which they certainly are showing today. I wrote down the name of that one end here who went right over the guy who was going to block him. What was his name? And, uh, and, uh, the Georges. I think you yeah. talking about Georges. Bill Georges. He was yeah. blocked, but he didn't yeah. stop. He went right over the that's top. Right. went over two of them and, and got the man, and uh, that's the sort of thing that's been going on all, all afternoon, this first half, and it's really paying dividends. Uh, it's rather unusual. It's a reversal, I believe, of the usual procedure. Uh, Tennessee usually capitalizes on breaks, and uh, in the first half, uh, 
Texas uh, capitalized on a Tennessee mistake to score its touchdown. You're not kidding. Listen, now, how, uh, how long have you been with the uh, Dallas News? Uh, since the war, Bob. I used to be with the Associated Press uh, oh, yeah. before that, always in Texas. Mm-hmm. Listen, uh, uh, how many of you fellas belong to the Football Writers Association? Oh, it's uh, quite a large group. We have uh, several hundred uh, members from all over the United States. It's a very large group. Our uh, big meeting uh, where we elect officers is at the All-Star Game in Chicago every uh, oh, yeah. August. I imagine in a state like Texas here, where you're working for one of the big metropolitan newspapers, and you have a lot of colleges that have a lot of good football teams, uh, it's, your job in the fall is a pretty busy one, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is, uh, Bob. We really go strong for that football down here, and, it's uh, of course, it's... Uh, it's a sort of a, it's a headache in one regard and a, and a great love in the other. Oh, they love it. There's no doubt about that. Listen, Ed Price has uh, set himself quite a record uh, down here, Bill. What does it look like next year for the Longhorns? Well, I think they're going to be uh, hurt considerably. It looks uh, right now like uh, SMU and uh, Baylor and Rice are going to be the uh, three teams that we're going to have to flip a coin over. It's pretty hard to stay topside in this league for too long, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's very unusual for a team to do what Texas has done. They've uh, gone undefeated now in the conference in two of the last three seasons, and that is uh, a record in itself uh, with the conference as it's presently constituted. Mm-hmm. Very remarkable feat. Price has done a wonderful job down there. Bill, we sure appreciate your coming over here. I guess you you just walked over, though, didn't you? Or did you walk up? I just walked up. Oh, fine. We sure appreciate your walking up, and thanks an awful lot for being here today. Fine. Thank you a lot, Bill Reeves, the president of the Football Writers Association of America and sports editor of the Dallas Morning News and certainly an interested observer here today. See, folks, here's the big announcement of the new year in electronics for the home. For 1953, uh, Philco introduces the most advanced television receivers ever offered the American public. There's new improved uh, Golden Grid television, new amazing all-channel UHF television, too, and a new lower price. Yes, in 1953, America's most wanted television can be yours at new low cost in a brand new Philco Golden Grid receiver with 21-inch picture. It's a true Philco high-fidelity set with true Golden Grid tuner, and it's available with the Golden Grid tandem tuner, too, for all-channel UHF. It has Philco's exclusive electronic built-in aerial for UHF and VHF, yet the price is lower. Yes, for 1953, your Philco dealer will soon be showing the most advanced performance and the greatest values ever seen in television. Brand new from Philco, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. Here's a gentleman sitting here who's not quite as happy, I don't imagine, uh, with what's gone uh, here in the first half of this game between Texas and Tennessee. He's a sports editor of the uh, Knoxville News Sentinel, and right there on the home base of the Volunteers uh, School, Bob Wilson is his name. How are you, Bob? Fine, thank you, uh, Bob. Uh, I, all I can say right now is that uh, I'm not so very happy. I'm a little bit dis- disappointed up to this stage. Well, I just said to Bill Reeves here that a team like Tennessee that uh, had a fine season in spite of a uh, little trouble along the way certainly hasn't shown uh, what it has in this first half. It certainly hasn't. They've showed a lot of jittery. They've been very jittery in this first half, and uh, that's not like a Tennessee team, except uh, last year they, they got jittery in the uh, Sugar Bowl, you know, and they lost that ball game because they were jittery. Mm-hmm. Looks like they're going to try to do the same thing here today. Mm-hmm. What was the best game they had this year? Do you remember, Bob? Alabama I, uh, was the best game that Tennessee played in my opinion. Definite upset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about this uh, exhibition down here today now? As you say, they've been a little jittery and uh, doing a lot of fumbling. Have they had a game this year where they uh, fumbled as often as they have in this first no, game? No, no, they haven't. This is the worst fumbling game they've played so far. Oh, uh, it's, uh, worst, uh, it's worse than the uh, Sugar Bowl game last year. Mm-hmm. How long have you been writing for the News uh, Sentinel down I've been writing about 25 years for the News Sentinel in Knoxville. I might say that, that I haven't given up hope, though, Bob. Uh, we still have a, a boy in there that hasn't played yet, uh, Pat Oleksiak. And I, I believe if Pat can get in there, he may get him rolling. I don't know. They, they, uh, the Texas team has played a remarkable defensive game. Which I wasn't think. expected uh, right. at all. Uh, those big fellows like Sewell and Georges and those fellows are getting through there on our boys before they get started. I don't I don't know what's happening in there, but uh, I hope it changes in the second half. <laughs> you sure do. How many uh, of these teams were you here, I suppose, two years ago, were you? That's right. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that would probably be the only time you'd have gotten to the Cotton Bowl on account of Tennessee. That's right. I've been with Tennessee most every year. 
But uh, it was quite different out here that day, you know. Uh, yes, it, well, it wasn't so different until the last, what was it, about the last minute, wasn't That's it? That's right, the last, last uh, half. Uh, and they say watch Tennessee in the second half today. I hope we get, uh, watch them and see them go very strong in that second half. Well, I think your, your friend from uh, Dallas here, Bill Reeves, he certainly agrees. They haven't... Uh, Somebody's going to get a little talking to, I imagine, down there in the basement, huh? Well, nine points is, is a good lead, all right, but it's not uh, typically to overcome, and Tennessee gets in there and hits a couple it's of good runs. Or kind a of an awkward. Of kind That's of an right. awkward lead to overcome. That's right. It's, uh, here's, it's got two touchdowns. Here's a score that a man who reports uh, Southeast Conference would certainly be interested in, uh, Bob uh, Wilson. First half at New Orleans down there in the Sugar Bowl. Mississippi 7, Georgia Tech 10. Well, uh, I figured Georgia Tech would take them about two touchdowns. We did. Uh, well, they were... Mississippi has a very good ball club and is capable of coming back there and upsetting them. Mm-hmm. Well, it certainly looks like a good ball game over there. Oh, it does, yeah. But we had wonderful weather and uh, nice of you to come on up here today and say hello to all your friends down in Tennessee, Bob. Well, I hope I have something more to tell them uh, in the paper than I have right now. Morning. Tell them on the radio. Thank you very much, Bob. Okay, Bob. Bob Wilson, the sports editor of the uh, Knoxville News Sentinel and certainly an interested observer here this afternoon. Say, we got some statistics here. Um, these official or unofficial, Woody? Unofficial, uh, unofficial statistics. Uh, first downs, Tennessee 2, uh, Texas 9. The uh, rushing yards uh, net for Tennessee, well, certainly tells the story of what's been going on here. Uh, from scrimmage, Tennessee has lost 23 yards in the first half of this Cotton Bowl game here in Dallas today, whereas Texas gained 125 yards. The passing yardage net... Uh, nothing for Tennessee. Uh, Pat Shires has been having some real trouble there because those Texas linemen have been seeping through and smearing him before he could get rid of the ball. So they've gained no yardage uh, through the air, and Texas has gained only a net of nine yards through the air. Passes attempted, two for Tennessee and Texas four. Uh, completions, uh, none for Tennessee, and Texas completed one out of four. Uh, own passes intercepted, uh, neither for either team. Punts, five for Tennessee and four for Texas. The average on punting, 37 yards for Tennessee and 36 for Texas. Uh, Yards penalized, 20 for Tennessee and 30 for Texas. Uh, The uh, leading ground gainer for Tennessee is Schwanger, who gained 12 yards in two attempts. Leading uh, ground gainer for Texas is Ochoa, who gained 59 yards in 13 attempts and has really been driving after he's been hit out there today. The leading passer, well, there's none uh, none completed out there, or one out of four, so there, there hasn't been much choice there. Uh, that is, in the Tennessee side, the leading passer for Texas is Jones. Uh, T. Jones completed uh, one out of two that he threw himself for nine yards. Well, that's the story of the, uh, of the first half here, in statistics at least, uh, of the Cotton Bowl Classic from Dallas, Texas, the University of Texas, and the Volunteers from Tennessee. And down on the field here, and by the way, there's not a cloud in the sky now as that weather uh, moves uh, from the uh, north over here and has uh, completely blown away the clouds that, uh, frankly, had this uh, sort of an overcast day when uh, we came out here earlier today. But just as the starting whistle blew, the clouds all uh, uh, started to disperse, and uh, about halfway through this first half, they had completely gone, and we have a cloudless sky uh, over the uh, Cotton Bowl here this afternoon. Uh, down on the field, these wonderful youngsters from all over the state of Texas are going through their maneuvers now. The Rangerettes, the young college girls that I uh, mentioned at the outset, from Kilgore College here in Texas, are now marching off the field in the massed bands, five high school bands from various parts of the state of Texas, uh, one dressed in uh, bright uh, blue Blue trousers, blue coats. One band over here on the far left dressed in royal blue coats with gray trousers with a very trim stripe going down the side. And blue hats with the the big uh, red plume coming up from them. Very, very colorful. They're now uh, forming uh, five figures out here on the field. Understand all of this was well rehearsed, of course, at the, in their uh, native towns long before they ever came up here to Dallas. And then they rehearsed uh, several days over here at the Dallas uh, High School uh, Stadium, which, by the way, is uh, quite a stadium itself. A beautiful stadium over there. Now the band down there is uh, giving us a little masked music, and uh, this part of the program, from what I saw yesterday, is very musical. So, Don, let's go down here and pick up a little bit of that.
motif of this uh, halftime uh, musical demonstration down here by these five high school bands from various parts of Texas and the Rangerettes is Music in America. And uh, you just heard the popular tune that they just played here a moment ago. They're now forming into another group here. A grand piano is forming down in front of us. And I believe at this juncture they're going to play uh, the famous uh, Gershwin number, the Rhapsody in Blue. They're all uh, forming. The Rangerettes are coming in with their red blouses and blue skirts, white belts at the waist, and the typical uh, real light Texas hats. And here's the music, some Gershwin music from down on the field. the uh, bands disperse again. The grand piano that was formed by the group from the Robert E. Lee High School down in Baytown, Texas has now spread out into a great uh, a great wide semicircle here in front, surrounded by bands. And here's another Gershwin tune. I got rhythm with some of the, the whole Rangerettes out there, and believe me, the Rockettes could well take a lesson from this group. Let's listen to the music. Texas can certainly be proud of these young people here. And the masked bands disappear from the center of the field. And on the uh, field again, we see the Texas boys coming down the sidelines here. A great show at the halftime at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Here's a score from the Gator Bowl. Jacksonville, Florida. The University of Florida, seven. Tulsa University, uh, nothing. That's in the first period. Philco Corporation is bringing you this broadcast of the Cotton Bowl Classic from Dallas. And friends, the secret is out with this special Cotton Bowl announcement for January 1st, 1953. Tomorrow at your Philco dealers, a brand new 1953 Philco Golden Grid television receiver makes its debut and at a new low price. Philco has advanced the frontiers of television science again. New developments, new advances now bring you the television that's number one in public demand at a value price never before equaled. It's a big 21-inch Philco Golden Grid television tuner. This Philco picture is 20 square inches bigger than others advertised at the same size. You also get Philco's exclusive electronic and directional built-in aerial for both UHF and VHF. Yet your Philco dealer can now announce a new low price. So start 1953 with the greatest television ever offered the American public. See, compare, and own this great new Philco Golden Grid receiver at record low cost at your Philco dealers now. 
Well, the teams are coming back on the field here at the uh, Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The score is Texas 9, Tennessee nothing, as we're about to begin the first half. We pause now briefly, 10 seconds, for station identification. This is Bob Murphy speaking to you from the Cotton Bowl Stadium in Dallas, Texas. The teams have come back on the field uh, over on the far side there in their unfamiliar white jerseys, the Volunteers from Tennessee, and right down below us, the uh, Longhorns from the University of Texas, who are now leading 9 to nothing as this second half of the Cotton Bowl Classic for 1953 is just about to begin. The skies are sunny. The uh, between half show was uh, really a beautiful thing to behold down below here. It's a wonderful day in Dallas. Folks have come from uh, all parts of the country, not to mention uh, Tennessee, believe me, because they were certainly here in special trains for the last two days. By the way, I noticed uh, one of the Dallas newspapers was publishing a special department of Tennessee news here as a feature and a courtesy to the visitors from Tennessee. And now out on the field, uh, they come again, the Longhorns and the Volunteers. And here again is Lindsey Nelson to bring you the play-by-play account of the second half. Lindsey? All right, Bob, and to kick off here for Tennessee, it's going to be Ralph Adams as the Volunteers will kick off and defend the south goal. Texas will receive and defend the north goal. Cameron and Pace will be the two deep men for Texas. Adams to kick off for Tennessee. In the first half, Tennessee picked up two first downs. Texas got nine. Net yards rushing. Tennessee at a minus 23, and Texas at 125. Waiting now for the kickoff of the second half. Texas leading 9 to nothing. Here comes Adams forward. He's told me it's a ball. It's a sailor. Hitting on the 17. Bounding all the way back to the 7. Taken there by Cameron. He's back to the 10, 15, 20, 25. And it's filled on the 27-yard line. John Michaels. Phil Cameron on the 27. And so now the Texas Longhorns take over. First and 10. They have the ball on their own 27-yard line. Second half getting underway at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. We were to have had Andy Kozar on the air here at the halftime. However, Andy went to the dressing room with the Tennessee Volunteers at halftime. Didn't get up here to the broadcast booth. His ball club trailing. He was in there with them. First and ten now for Texas, and they held the ball on their own 27-yard line. Doug Adkins, coming all the way back up the field, had been far downfield, and uh, just now is coming into the ball game. And another Tennessee man coming onto the field. That is Darius McCord, who is coming onto the field now. The Volunteers getting their defense set. Referee Alvin Bell moves away from the ball. Texas up there in T formation. Same backfield that they had in the first half. T. Jones is the man in there. Waiting now for the snap as he looks around. Running it up to a high account. He spins. Hands the ball off. The play goes up the middle. It's Ochoa carrying and he moves it across the 30 down to the 35 yard line. Bill Barbish came in to spill him as Dick Ochoa. The powerhouse runner of the University of Texas Longhorns. Moved the ball up to the 35. Again eight yards on the play. So it is second down and two. Second and two for Texas, and they have the ball on their own 35. Dick Ochoa, one of Texas' tri-captains, called by many the outstanding back in the Southwest Conference. He was the leading ball carrier in the conference with 819 yards and 194 carries. Here is a flanker, Billy Quinn, split out 10 yards to the right. Play instead is going up the middle of Ochoa. He gets across the 35 and on up to the 38 or 9-yard line. Francis Holohan and Andy Myers, and it's him a first down for Texas. First down for the Longhorns as they have the ball on their own 38-yard line. And the Texas Longhorns have begun here in the second half just as they played throughout the first half. The only surprising thing about Texas' performance in the first half, according to pregame dope, was the fact that they showed such a sterling defense. It was well known that they were one of the great offensive teams, but their defense was somewhat of a surprise. T. Jones is under now, gets the ball. This time the handoff is going to Billy Quinn, goes wide to his left, and is finally spilled on the 34-yard line. Roger Rottroff got him by one foot, tripped him back in the 34-yard line. So it's going to go as a loss of four, second down and 14 yards to go for Texas. They have the ball on their own 34-yard line. Rottroff, a defensive end for Tennessee, 5'10", 185 from Cincinnati. Speaking of Ochoa, as we were a moment ago, he started against Tennessee two years ago as a defensive halfback. He is now known as Mr. First Down for obvious reasons. Second and 14 for Texas on their own 34. Jones sliding down the line. Here's the pitch out. It is going to Dawson looking downfield for a receiver. Jumps into the air, throws. Incomplete out of bounds and over in front of the Texas bench. Dawson throwing downfield. It was intended downfield for Billy Quinn. But when incomplete, it was thrown out of bounds. So it's going to be third and 14 now for Texas, and they have the ball still on their own 34-yard line. Our spotters this afternoon for the University of Texas, Jack Kites, and for the University of Tennessee, Julian Andes, both doing a swell job. 
Texas now sending the kicking team in. As apparently they're going to boot it out of there on third down. Bob Raley is the man who will do the booting. Ed Godzak is back in single safety for Tennessee. Godzak, 5'10", 175 pounder from Webster, Pennsylvania. Here is Raley back in deep punt formation on his own 22. Godzak is on his own 34. Hands out stretch now. Raley waits for the snap. Gets it a perfect pass from center. Boots the ball away. A high kick that is floating across midfield, across the 40. Taken by Godzak on the 35, and he's still back on the 29-yard line. Probably will be put down about the 31. He fumbled the ball away. However, the whistle had blown. He was hit down there by Hugh Reeder. And the ball is being placed down on the 31-yard line. So Tennessee will take over. First and 10. Godzak took the ball about the 35. Was finally uh, driven all the way back to the 31. And finally was hit down on the 29. Fumble. However, the whistle had blown. And it's in play on the 31. All right, Tennessee. Set to go. Jimmy Wade, the tailback. Ray Bird is the fullback. Single wing, formation right. Ball is taken this time by Jimmy uh, Wade, the tailback. Fake to the fullback, hits in there, picks up about two yards to the 33. Clifford Polk and Carlton Massey made the tackle. Second down and eight yards for Tennessee, and they have the ball on their own 33-yard line. In the backfield for Tennessee, Ed Morgan is at wing back, Hal Herbert at blocking back, Ray Bird at fullback, and Jimmy Wade at tailback. This is the first single wing team that Texas has met since they met this very same Tennessee team in this Cotton Bowl two years ago. They have met exclusively T formation and split T teams. Southern Methodist does use a wing formation, but against Texas, they used a spread throughout. Here's the ball to the fullback, and it is Bird hitting in there. Across the 35 up to the 36-yard line. The entire center of the Texas line in to make the tackle. Again, a three, so it's going to be third down and five. Third down, five yards to go for Tennessee. They have the ball on their own 36-yard line. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing. We have 11 minutes, 40 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter of this game at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Defensive signals being called by Jack Barton, one of the tri-captains and defensive right halfback of Texas. Single wing, formation right. Here's the ball going to Bird. He fumbles. There's a pileup. Bird fumble the ball going in. They dribbled it into the line. There is a big pileup. As they get him unstacked, Tennessee is in possession as the ball went up to about the 39-yard line. Again, a three, so it's going to be fourth and two. Pat Shires is coming to the ballgame now for Tennessee. Pat Shires is coming to the ballgame. It's a charge timeout as they get the kicker into the game, so it is fourth down and two yards to go. Fourth down, four. Tennessee in the deep punt formation on the 27-yard line. His own 27 is Shires. Bob Raley in defensive safety is back on his own 10. Hands out stretch now. Shires gets the ball. Boots it away. Coming across midfield. It hits on the 29 of Texas. Across the 25. Down to the 20. Still bounding down to the 15. Gets a good roll down to the 10. Still going down to the 9. The 8. And is dropping dead on the 7-yard line. John Michaels right over the ball as it dropped dead on the 7. And that is where Tennessee will take over. Correction. Texas will take over. First and 10 on their own 7-yard line. Texas this afternoon wearing orange jerseys, as we've said before, in Tennessee, decked out in white. First and ten for Texas, and they have the ball on their own seven. Texas leading by a score of nine to nothing. Here are the Longhorns, snapping out of the huddle and up the line, moving into T formation, and it is T. Jones who is in there at quarterback. Same backfield it's been in all day long. Tennessee in a 6-2-2-1 defense. The handoff goes right this time to Billy Quinn, cuts off tackle across the 10, goes down to the 12, the 13-yard line. Mac Franklin in to make the tackle on the 13, along with Bob Griesbach. So it is a gain of six on the play. It's going to be second and four for the Texans as they have the ball on their own 13-yard line. Texas two years ago in their game against Tennessee used a tight T formation as Blair Cherry was the head coach. Last year, Texas switched to a split T formation under head coach Ed Price, who is completing his second year at the helm. T formation, second and four for Texas on their own 13. Jones gets the ball, is handing off this time to Dawson. Cuts across the 15, gets up to the 17-yard line. Doug Atkins in to make the tackle. Very close to our first down for Texas. The referee takes a look over toward the sideline as they get them unstacked. It's going to be third down and about a yard to go. Third and about one as the ball's on about the 16 and a half. Call it third and one on the 16. Texas in possession in their own territory. The sun's still shining as it has been throughout this ballgame here this afternoon. T. Jones, the quarterback. Tennessee now on a seven diamond. Here's the handoff going to right half. Billy Quinn cuts across to the 19 for the first down. Mac Franklin in to make the tackle for Tennessee. Billy Quinn carrying to the 19-yard line, and that's a first down for Texas. Longhorns with the ball on their own 19. 
And remember Philco, Golden Grid Television, now at new, low cost, in a 1953 21-inch receiver. This broadcast of the 1953 Cotton Bowl game brought to you by Philco. T formation, first and ten for the Longhorns on their own 19. Sliding to the left is Jones. He's handing off to fullback Dick Ochoa. Cuts across the 20 and moves down to the 21-yard line. Andy Myers made the tackle on the 21, so it's going to be second down and eight for Texas as they have the ball on their own 21-yard line. Dick Ochoa, the man carrying the ball, has lost only 10 yards in three seasons. In three seasons of varsity play, he has lost only 10 yards. Missed the first down, they call him. Second and eight now for Texas, and they have the ball on their own 21. Ball on the long 21-yard line. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing by virtue of a safety... A touchdown by Gib Dawson, an extra point by Gib Dawson. Billy Quinn, flanked five yards outside the right end, fading his T. Jones, looks for his receiver, throws down the middle, complete up to the 38, to the 40, and down to the 44-yard line is Billy Quinn. T. Jones passing to Billy Quinn, and the ball moves up to the 44 before Gene Moeller finally dragged him down. So it's first down, 10 yards to go for Texas. As the Longhorns, passing from deep in their own territory, have passed to the flanker who was split five yards outside the right end. They moved it up to the 44. Quinn went down about 10 yards, cut over to midfield, took it straight down the middle, so it's first and 10. Here they are, up there once again in T formation. Tennessee with a seven diamond. Waiting is T. Jones, the quarterback, going to a high count. Here's the snap, he slides left, the handoff goes to Gibb Dawson, penalty flag goes down, Dawson goes to the 50-yard line, finally brought down by Gene Moeller. Gene Moeller uh, brought him down on the 50-yard line, however, there's a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Dawson picked up six yards on the play. The official's now checking. And Texas was offsides on the play. Texas offsides on the play, and the Tennessee captain, the defensive captain, is Francis Holohan. Has his choice now. The play is being called back in Texas. Will be assessed five yards from the line of scrimmage, which will carry the ball back to the 39-yard line. The down remains the same. It's first and 15. First and 15 for Texas. They have the ball on their own 39-yard line. Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. The Volunteers having been held scoreless in this ball game Throughout the regular season, Tennessee was held scoreless only one game. That was the Duke game in which the Duke Blue Devils defeated Tennessee by a score of 7 to nothing. Now, it is Gib Dawson split in 5 yards or 10 yards outside the left end. D. Jones gets the ball this time. Here the handoff goes to Billy Quinn, the right halfback going to his left. Sweeps, can't go. Thrown at the line of scrimmage on the 39 by Andy Myers. Andy Myers of Knoxville, Tennessee, through Quinn at the line of scrimmage. So it is second down and 15. Here's a score in the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, at the end of the first half. Florida, 14, Tulsa, nothing. Second and 15 for Texas. They have the ball on their own 39. Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. Here's a T formation. Tennessee in a 6 2 2 1. May shift one linebacker in. Here's Jones fading back, looking for receiver. Standing on his own 30. Can't get rid of it. Running to his right. Still looking. Finally throws up field, and it is complete up to the 46 yard line. A beautiful catch by Stolhansky. But the penalty flag has gone down. Hugh Garner was the man right with Stolhansky. Stolhansky. He made the grab. The penalty flag is down on the 47 yard line, and now. We have the officials checking with the captains once again. Stolhansky and Garner seemingly grab that ball simultaneously. And pass interference is being ruled. And the ball goes up to the 48-yard line for an automatic first down for Texas. If pass interference is ruled, it would be automatic. However, that is not. Check it. One of the co-captains comes up to check with the referee. The ball is up to the 48-yard line. And it's going to be second down. And about six yards to go. It'll be second and six for Texas as the pass goes complete to Stolhansky from T. Jones up to the 48-yard line. So Texas leads by a score of nine to nothing. They have the ball on their own 48, second and six, and here's Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, friends, tomorrow for sure, meet the acknowledged leader in television performance at new low 1953 prices. To start 1953 off with a bang, your Philco dealer is presenting new Philco television with the Golden Grid Tuner. Now you can buy a 21-inch Golden Grid receiver at a price that's actually the lowest in history. That's right, Philco's Golden Grid television, number one in public demand, is now yours at less cost than ever before, thanks to new Philco engineering triumphs. It's a true Golden Grid receiver with the only built-in UHF VHF aerial that's electronic and directional. It's available with Golden Grid tandem tuner for all-channel UHF reception. 
It outperforms any other set at any price, friends, yet the price is rock bottom for quality TV. Find out how easy it is now to own one from Philco, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. They're up to the line, and here again is Lindsey Nelson. Second and six for Texas on their own 48, third quarter. Jones gets the ball, hands off up the middle. It's Ochoa, and he is piled up on the 50-yard line. Picked up two yards on the play. Gene Moley came to make the tackle. Andy Myers also in there, so it's going to be third down and four for Texas. Third and four. We have six minutes, 38 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter of this football game. Texas leading by a score of nine to nothing. Third down three. The Longhorns huddling back on their own 40-yard line. Tennessee has been using primarily a 6-2 and a 7 diamond defensively. Here's a flanker split outside the left end. It's Gib Dawson out there five yards. T. Jones takes a look around before leaning in and under to get the hand off from the center. Gets it this time. Here's a handoff going to Ochoa right up the middle, and he goes to the 44-yard line. Hit down by Bob Griesbach, the left linebacker for Tennessee, and it's a first down for Texas. The Longhorns are on the march, and they have it first and 10 on the Tennessee 44-yard line. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing. Texas, as you know, lost only two ball games this entire season. They lost one to Notre Dame. They lost one to Oklahoma. Against Notre Dame, Texas played a tremendous game the first half. We're leading Texas, or rather we're leading Notre Dame. The Irish came back and beat them in the second half. First and 10 on the 44. Here's T. Jones handing off to Gibb Dawson, the left halfback. Gets to the 40, still going down to the 35, and is hit down on the 32-yard line. Francis Hullahan spilled him on the 32. It's another first down for Texas. A Tennessee man shaking up on the play. When play is resumed, it'll be first and ten for Texas. They'll have the ball on the 32. Roger Rotroff is the man who has been shaken up. Roger Rotroff, a defensive end. Mickey O'Brien, the trainer, comes onto the field. So time has been called. When play is resumed, it'll be first and ten for Texas on the Tennessee 32, Texas 9, and Tennessee nothing. Well, the uh, second half here begins to look, uh, rather, the, the third period begins to look like the first period again, uh, Lindsay. Texas is dominating the play here pretty much again. Uh, that boy Dawson is certainly a hard runner. He was hit there uh, easily seven yards before he stopped, and he was hit straight up, straight up too. But he spun off the man and uh, fell across uh, the 35-yard line uh, down to about 32, 33-yard line there where he finally was brought to earth. He played a wonderful game. He's the lad, you know, who scored uh, for Texas there on an end sweep which he outran his man very neatly and uh, really put Texas in a commanding position here uh, as the second quarter was about midway through its uh, the time it uh, ran here this afternoon. The boys are standing down there in the field now. Uh, this uh, Tennessee player who's down on the ground there, Mickey O'Brien's looking at him, helping him to his feet now, and apparently he just had the wind knocked out of him because he's not even going to leave the game. He flexing one leg there as though perhaps he might have bent his knee a little bit suddenly but he's going to stay in the game and the trainer is now trotting off the field boys are putting their helmets back on the Texas team goes into his huddle again referee walks uh, away from the ball and play is called in up come the Longhorns again here's Lindsey Nelson first and ten for the Longhorns the ball on the Tennessee 32 T. Jones gets the ball slides right this time hands off to Billy Quinn Quinn goes down to the 25 and is finally spilled on the 24 yard line Andy Myers spilling him on the 24 as Billy Quinn, the right halfback, took the ball and moved it. Straight off tackle. A split T handoff to the right halfback as T. Jones simply slid down there and handed it off to Billy Quinn, the sophomore sensation of Texas, who moved it down to the 24-yard line. So it's going to be second down now for Texas. Second down and about two to go as they have the ball on the Tennessee 24. Up there again in T formation. Tennessee has seven diamond defense. Ball is taken this time by Jones, fading back, looking for a receiver. Looks and throws, intended for Dawson, and the deep man in the end zone. Incomplete is Gilmer Spring. An incomplete pass. Dawson went out to the left. Instead, he threw to the deep man, Gilmer Spring, in the end zone. Jerry Hyde and Ed Godzak were covering. It goes as an incompleted forward pass, and it's going to be third and two on the 24. Gilmer Spring, deep in the corner. Dawson also in the same zone. Third down one. As T. Jones took the ball, he faded back, looked and faked to Dawson, the near man, and finally threw to the deep man. So it's third and two, and the ball is on the 24 of Tennessee still in possession. Off Texas with four minutes, 48 seconds, remaining to be played in the third quarter. Here is Gibb Dawson, flanked 10 yards outside the left end. Tennessee in a seven diamond, the end split out to cover the flanker. Here is T. Jones carrying straight up the middle, moves it down to the 22. It's going to be very close to a first down. Myers and Moeller in to make the tackle. Wedging him out up the middle was T. Jones, and it's down to the 22, very close. They may have to measure, they may not. The referee signals a first down for Texas. 
The referee signals a first down for Texas on the 22. So it's first and 10 for the Longhorns, and they're driving toward pay dirt, leading by a score of 9 to nothing. On the volunteer 22 yard line. This Texas team that went undefeated in Southwestern Conference competition has been a great offensive and defensive team this afternoon. Here they are, up there, set to go. Sliding right, and the handoff goes to Billy Quinn. He's hit on the 21, picked up one yard as Mac Franklin came in to make the tackle. Second down, and nine yards to go. Speaking as we were a moment ago about the fact that Dick Ochoa had lost only 10 yards in three seasons, uh, must be mentioned the fact, of course, that in a split-T formation, the handoff takes place at the line of scrimmage, which makes it uh, difficult to lose yardage if the ball is handed off right there, as it usually is. Up there in T formation now. Second and nine on the Tennessee 21. T. Jones slides left, gives to Dawson across the 20 down to the 19-yard line, thrown back at the 19. Myers and Fisher came to make the tackle as Gibb Dawson, the left halfback carrot, is placed down near the 20-yard line. So color again of yard is going to be third down and eight. Third and eight for Texas. And they have the ball on the Tennessee 20-yard line. Texas nine, Tennessee nothing. Three minutes, 20 seconds remaining to be played in this, the third quarter. Earlier, we were mentioning some of the great Texas players who have gone before. Tennessee All-Americans of past years have been Gene McEver, Bobby Dodd, Herman Hickman, Baby Feathers, Bowden Wyatt, George Cafago, Suffrage, Shires, Fox, Malensky, Huffman, Daffer, Pierman, Laura, Sella, Michaels, and Adkins. All is taken this time by Jones, fading back, throws. It's intercepted on the 10, return to the 15, the 20. And he is finally spilled on the 22-yard line. An intercepted pass, Grease Bach has intercepted and returned to the 23, and Tennessee takes over. Bob Griesbach, 5'10", 185-pounder from Portsmouth, Virginia, intercepted the pass, and so the threat of Texas is temporarily averted as the ball is moved out to the 22-and-a-half. Let's call it the 22. First down and 10 yards to go for Texas, and they held the ball on their own 22-yard line. Bill McDonald, the man who finally dragged him down, Tennessee offensively on their own 22, moving into a single wing. Pat Shires in there at tailback. Starting signals being called. Instead, it's taken to the fullback. Ray Bird hits him, gets across the 25, up to the 30. Still going and moves down to the 33-yard line. Ray Bird carrying to the 33-yard line. And that's going to be a first down for Tennessee. First down and 10 yards to go as Ray Bird of Knoxville, Tennessee carried. Hugh Reeder and Bill Georges made the tackle. Pat Oleksiak is coming to the ballgame. Pat Oleksiak of Hempstead, Long Island in New York has come into the ballgame at tailback. He's 5'10", 190-pounder, Pat Oleksiak. Spelled O-L-E-K-S-I-A-K. Here's the ball to Bird again. Hits in there. Hit at the 34 and hit hard as he picked up one yard. Price, Todd Price from Electra, Texas, came in to make the tackle. Second down and nine for Tennessee, and they have the ball on their own 34. One minute, 56 seconds remaining to be played. And this the third quarter of the ballgame. Texas leading by a score of nine to nothing. In the backfield for Tennessee, Pat Olekshack is at tailback, Ray Bird is at fullback, Hal Hubbard is at blocking back, and Ed Morgan is on the wing. Texas now, Jack Martin, the defensive right halfback, calling defensive signals. Texas has moved into a seven diamond. Now they move one linebacker, they move three linebackers out back to make it a 5-3. Here's the ball taken this time, it is handed to Olekshack, jumps, throws, and it is in! It is complete! Up on the 44-yard line, a beautiful catch by Kalenic. A circus catch by Vic Kalinick up on the 44-yard line of Texas. Bob Raley was covering Kalinick with his hands outstretched. He bobbled the ball momentarily, held on to it. A beautiful circus catch, and it's a first down for Tennessee in Texas territory as Tennessee is now called timeout. So once again, time in for Bob Murphy. If television's on your mind, here's a cheer for the new year. The television that's number one in public demand is now yours at record low cost. Tomorrow at your Philco dealers, you can see a great new Philco 21-inch receiver with a fabulous golden grid tuner, priced lower than ever before in history. The time has come to treat yourself to the finest, folks, and now it costs less than ever to own unmatched Philco golden grid television. This history-making set has Philco's exclusive built-in UHF, VHF aerial that's directional and electronic. It's available with a built-in, all-channel UHF. See it at your Philco dealers tomorrow. Up to the line again come the Volunteers, and here's Lindsey Nelson. Tennessee moving into formation left. First and 10 on the Texas 44. Oleksiak is at tailback. Bird is at fullback. Here's the ball. Taking this time, it's fumble. Bird tries to pick it up. It is back to the Tennessee 40-yard line, and Texas has recovered. Todd Price has recovered for Texas. 
Todd Price has recovered on the Tennessee 41-yard line. The snap went back to Bird. He was spinning and trying to hand the ball off to Oleksiak. He and Oleksiak on the fullback tailback series spinning. It got away, bobbled all the way back, and Pod Price has recovered for Texas. So now the Longhorns have the ball. First down, 10 yards to go, and they have it on the Tennessee 41-yard line. One minute, four seconds remaining to be played in this, the third quarter of the ball game. Texas leading by a score of 9 to nothing. The Longhorns up there in T formation. Tennessee in a 6-2-2-1. T. Jones, the quarterback, waiting now for the snap. Gets the ball this time. Hands off Ochoa going up the middle. Moves across the 40 down to the 37-yard line. Hit by Andy Myers. Again, a four yards on the play, so it's going to be second and six. The Texas Longhorns, who lost the ball deep in Tennessee territory by virtue of an interception a moment ago, are driving once again toward the Tennessee goal as they have gotten the ball on a Tennessee fumble. This afternoon, it's been the Texas Longhorns who have been the opportunists as they have taken advantage of Tennessee mistakes and are leading in this ball game by a score of nine to nothing. Time running out in the third period. Possibly this will be the last play of the third quarter. Second and six on the Tennessee 37. Texas in possession. 6-2-2-1 defense for Tennessee. T formation. Balance line for Texas. Here's the handoff going to Dick Ochoa. Moves across the 35. Down to the 33-yard line. Holohan and Griesbach in to make the tackle. Five seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. And there is the end of the third quarter. The end of the third quarter of the Cotton Bowl game in Dallas, Texas, with a score, Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. All right, Lindsey Nelson, you take a breather now, and there the teams are changing ends of the field. The shadows here, as we look down, are beginning to fall from our side of the field across to the other side as the sun goes a little farther into the western skies. We move into the last quarter of the Cotton Bowl Classic, Tennessee and Texas from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The score, Texas 9, Tennessee nothing. And a great football game it has been uh, with the volunteers from Tennessee having an awful lot of trouble today and a lot of bad breaks and hanging onto that ball in instances that certainly turned out to be very decisive. The Cotton Bowl Classic brought to you by Philco Corporation, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. All over America, it's first in public demand, and now, for 1953, it's far ahead in value, too. Brand-new 1953 Philco Golden Grid television models are arriving at your Philco dealers right now. They being new standards of television engineering, just like a boost in station power, actually. They bring the exclusive Philco all-channel directional built-in aerial for both UHF and VHF. See them tomorrow. They're back on the line. Here's Lindsey Nelson. Texas set to go. Here's a handoff going to Billy Quinn. He cuts across the 30-yard line and moves down to the 29-yard line, and that'll be enough for a first down. Hugh Garner came up in the secondary to make the tackle. Billy Quinn taking the handoff. Move the ball across the 30 down to the 29. A first down for Texas. So the Longhorns have the ball. First and 10, and they have it on the Tennessee 29. You know, Texas has one of the greatest records of any team in the country in bowl games. In the Sugar Bowl, Texas defeated Alabama. In the Orange Bowl, Texas has defeated Georgia. In the Cotton Bowl, Texas has defeated Georgia Tech, Missouri, and they've tied Randolph Field. Here they are, up there, set to go. First and 10 on the Tennessee 29. Jones with a handoff to Ochoa, straight up the middle, moves across the 25 and down to the 24-yard line. Francis Holohan and to spill him on the 24. Ochoa, Mr. First Down, has picked up five yards. So it's second and five now for Texas, and they held the ball on the Tennessee 24. The only time that the Longhorns of Texas have ever lost in a bowl game in their entire history was two years ago in this very same Cotton Bowl when they lost to the Tennessee Volunteers. This afternoon, they are coming back to even up the count. They are leading by a score of nine to nothing, and we're in the fourth quarter of this football game. Second and five for Texas, and they're driving on the Tennessee 24. Up there in T formation, T. Jones gets the ball. This time he hands off to Gib Dawson, cuts around off right tackle. Can't go, thrown possibly for a loss of a yard as Holohan came in to make the tackle. So it is third down and six yards to go for Texas as they have the ball on the Tennessee 25-yard line. This broadcast of the Cotton Bowl game brought to you by Philco Corporation presenting Philco Television with the Golden Grid tandem tuner for UHF. Nothing matches it. Texas, third and six on the Tennessee 25. Texas, nine. Tennessee, nothing. Here are the Longhorns, snapping out of the huddle and up to the line. Tennessee in a 6-2-2-1 defense. T. Jones, the quarterback for Texas, slides left this time. He's handing off to Dick Ochoa, gets across to the 24, picked up one, so it's going to be fourth and five. A fumble, and Tennessee has recovered. A fumble on the 24, and Tennessee has recovered as they get him on stack. Roger, Rattroff, and Gene Muller on the ball. As they get them up, so it's going to be first and ten for Tennessee, and the ball is spotted near the 25-yard line. 
Dick Ochoa carrying the ball, fumbled. Rod Traff and Muller recovered for Tennessee, so it's first and ten for the Vols as they held the ball on their own. 25-yard line, 13 minutes, 11 seconds remaining to be played in this ball game. Alex Shack is in at fullback for Tennessee, in at tailback for Tennessee. Ted Schwanger's in at fullback. Here is Oleksiak driving off tackle. He fumbles, and Texas recovers on the 26. Pat Oleksiak of Tennessee took the ball, hit off tackle to his right, fumbled, and Texas recovered on the 26. Jim Rosser from Cleburne, Texas, recovered on the 26. So now the Longhorns are back in possession. You know, two years ago in this ball game. Texas was leading. They had the ball. It looked as though they might have the game sewed up. They fumbled, and Tennessee recovered and won the ball game. Well, this afternoon, every time the Tennessee has had the ball and it started to drive, they have fumbled, and it's been Texas that has recovered. First and 10 now for Texas. On the Tennessee 26, Jones gets the ball. Hands off to Ochoa. Up the middle, across the 20, and down to the 19-yard line. Hugh Garner up in the secondary. Spilled him on the 19. Again, a seven yards on the play. Dick Ochoa, called by many, the outstanding back in the Southwest Conference, has moved the ball down to the 19. Gain of seven yards on the play, so it's second down and three. Second and three for the Texas Longhorns, who lead nine to nothing in this ball game. Twelve minutes, 25 seconds remaining to be played. Ochoa was named to the all-conference team by the coaches. Here's the flanker, split three yards outside the right end. It is Billy Quinn. The referee comes in now before they can snap it. The headlinesman also in there, the officials checking. This is an official's timeout, apparently. It is an official's timeout. Alvin Bell, the referee... Now moves away from the ball, says start the clock rolling, and we're set to go. Second and three on the Tennessee 19. Quinn is the flanker outside the right end. T. Jones gets the ball, slides left instead, gives it to Dawson. Dawson goes across the 15, spill just inside the 15-yard line by Frank McCruskey. And that's going to be enough for a first down for Texas. First down for the Longhorns on the Tennessee 15. Give Dawson the jack of all trades for the Texas Longhorns. Here at the ball for the first down. He is one of two men on this team, this Texas team, who are not from the state of Texas. He is from Douglas, Arizona. First and ten now for the Longhorns. The ball on the Tennessee 15. T. Jones gets the ball, slides left, gives to Dawson. Spinning, he gets to the 10. It's finally dragged down to the 10-yard line. Gene Muller in there to spill him. So it's going to be second down and five yards to go. Gib Dawson carrying right off tackle from his left halfback position. Move the ball up to the 10-yard line. So now the Texas Longhorns are driving, and this is the fourth quarter. No scoring in the third quarter of the ball game. Texas leading at the end of the first half, 9 to nothing. They are leading now by a score of 9 to nothing. We're in the fourth period, but they are driving on the Tennessee 10. They have it second down and five yards to go. Here they come, out of the huddle and up to the line. T. Jones, the quarterback. Gib Dawson, the left half. Dick Ochoa, the fullback, and Dick Quinn is the right half. Here is the handoff. He's going to Ochoa. Hits in there and gets across the five. Piled up right on the five. It may be another first down. Dick Ochoa. Carried to the five-yard line. Bob Griesbach dragged him down on the five. It is just short of a first down. So it's going to be third down. About a foot to go for a first down. Five yards to go for a touchdown for the Texas Longhorns. Tennessee now trying to step in the defense. Texas with a great backfield quartet. Of Jones, Dawson, Ochoa, and Quinn. Here they are up there in T formation now. Jones calling the starting signals. Gets the ball. Slides right this time. Here's a handoff. It's going to Quinn. Quinn hits in there. Moves right down to the one-yard line. Quinn is pushed back at the one-yard line. We'll see where the ball's going to be spotted. Ed Godzak came up from his defensive safety position to spill him on. It's going to be spotted on the two. It's a first down on the two-yard line. So now the Texas Longhorns have the ball. They have it first down goal to go, and they're on the Tennessee two-yard line. Texas leads by a score of nine to nothing. A Longhorns want to call time and talk it over, and we want to talk it over with Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay. Well, they're, they're really down in the enemy country right now. The Longhorns are on the march again. Philco Corporation, world's largest radio and television manufacturer, bringing you this, the classic from the Cotton Bowl on the first day of 1953. You know, there's never been television performance before to match the new 1953 Philco receivers with Golden Grid Tuner. They're arriving at your Philco dealers now, bringing with them a brand new day in television for both UHF and VHF. Philco with the Golden Grid is just like a boost in station power, adding new miles to television signals. And now the fabulous record of Philco Golden Grid Television is linked to UHF, too. For 1953, Philco brings you the Golden Grid Tandem Tuner for complete coverage of all television channels. Absolutely nothing matches it in all of the 82 television channels. Yes, Philco Golden Grid Television is America's finest. That's why it's number one in public demand all over the country. 
See your Philco dealer tomorrow. See and compare the spectacular performance and the amazing new values for 1953 from Philco, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. Now, the referee has called time in again. The clock has started. The Longhorns are in the huddle and just about to break. And here again is Lindsey Nelson. Exactly 10 minutes left to play in the ball game. Texas has it first down goal to go there on the Tennessee two. They're up there, set to go now. T. Jones gets the ball, hands off to Ochoa, dies. It's right to the goal line. He's piled up on the goal line. They're getting him on stack now, picking him off. He was thrown back right there at the goal line, possibly inches short. There's been no signal as yet as the referee. In fact, all the officials are in there. Getting on stack slowly, one by one. Adams, Holohan, Myers, they're all in there. The bottom of the stack. And it is just inches short of the goal line. So it's second down and goal to go. Second down and goal to go for Texas. And they held the ball inches away from that goal line. Second and goal on the six-inch line, we'll call it. Texas leading nine to nothing. They're driving for another touchdown now. Here they move up there in T formation. T Jones is in and under. He gets the ball. This time the handoff goes to Dawson. Gets right to the goal line. He is... In there for the touchdown! <laughs> the right halfback, Billy Quinn, it was, who carried it in. Right halfback, Billy Quinn, who scored six of Texas' last nine touchdowns during the regular season, carried the ball in there for the TD. The right halfback, Billy Quinn. The prior touchdown was scored by Dawson. This one was scored by Billy Quinn. Now we'll have Dawson trying the extra point. Holding is Bunny Andrews. Kicking is Gib Dawson. Andrews Gib Dawson has one for one this afternoon, 26 for 30 during the regular season. So he's 27 for 31. The ball is down, the kick is up, it's good. So as they come back up the field, it's Texas 16, Tennessee nothing, and here's Bob Murphy. Well, that uh, really makes it tough for the volunteers. They really have their work cut out for them now. 16 to nothing, the Texas Longhorns roaring back with a vengeance after having that last-minute defeat snatched uh, uh, from their grasp in the last meeting here in 1951 between the Volunteers and the Longhorns, the only two teams who have ever repeated in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. They're uh, lining up again for the kickoff here now. The Texas fans, of course, on the other side of the field over there have the big signs up spelling out across one whole section, Longhorns. They're naturally very jubilant. Over on the uh, bench on the far side of the field, the uh, volunteers are all standing. The substitutes and coaches are all standing along the sideline uh, trying to get something generated here. It's pretty tough, though, uh, when you, find, you run up against a team that's playing inspired ball, as Texas certainly is today, and then you yourself, your own lads, are constantly confronted with a series of uh, things that slow down your attack, those uh, costly fumbles that have held the volunteers back all afternoon. Philco Corporation, world's largest radio and television manufacturer, bringing you this, the 1953 broadcast of the Cotton Bowl Classic from the Cotton Bowl here in Dallas, Texas, on a wonderful day. There's nine minutes and 17 seconds left to play in this game, and uh, the Volunteers from Tennessee are trailing 16 to nothing. The kickoff uh, after the touchdown again, here again, is Lindsey Nelson. Ken Anglin kicking off for Texas. Started up, uh, the ball rolled off the kicking tee, the wind blew it off the kicking tee, so we have a momentary, uh, momentary delay. Here's a score from the Salad Bowl in Phoenix, Arizona, San Diego Naval Training Station 13, the 101st Airborne Division, nothing. Texas kicking off, Tennessee receiving, fourth quarter of the ballgame, Texas 16, Tennessee nothing. Here's angling forward, Tommy to ball along, end over end kick, it's sailing right down to the seven yard line, fumble, and recovered on the 15 by Tennessee. Martin recovered on the 15. As Godzak and Martin uh, both tried to make the catch mom uh, simultaneously, it was bobbled out to the 15. Martin fell on the ball, so it's first and 10 now on the 15, and the Tennessee man is shaken up. Tennessee man is shaken up on the 35-yard line, and trainer Mickey O'Brien has come onto the field. When play is resumed, Tennessee will have the ball first and 10 on their own 15. Two men trying to catch the kickoff simultaneously. They bobbled it up to the 15, where it was finally recovered by Ray Martin. Godzak and Martin were trying to... Uh, Return the kickoff simultaneously, and now, in order that our stations across this nation and around the world may properly identify themselves, we pause 10 seconds for station identification. At the world-famous Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, this is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy. Texas is leading Tennessee by a score of 16 to nothing, a Tennessee man having been shaken up on the kickoff, and when play is resumed, Tennessee will have the ball deep in their own territory. Texas got out in front early in the ball game when Tennessee and deep punt formation bobbled the ball in the end zone, 
and uh, couldn't get out with it, so Texas went ahead 2 to nothing. Gibb Dawson scored later, kicked the extra point. Texas led 9 nothing at the end of the first half. There was no scoring in the third quarter. And Billy Quinn, the sensational sophomore halfback, has just uh, scored the last touchdown for Texas, and Dawson has added the extra point. Lamar Leachman was the man who was shaking up. He is up and leaving the field now. Lamar Leachman, 6'1", 190, from Cartersville, Georgia, was the man shaking up on the play. He is leaving the field now. This broadcast brought to you by Philco, and remember Philco Television with the exclusive all-channel directional built-in aerial for both UHF and VHF. Pat Shire is in the tailback position. Ted Schwanger in at fullback for Tennessee. The ball is taken this time by Schwanger. Hands off to Shire. Shire's running to his right. Looks. Pass is complete to the 21. Down to the 25. And on up to the 30-yard line to Vic Kalinick. Check it to Tex Davis. Tex Davis. And Marvin Leith is the man who finally brought him down. Marvin Leith finally brought him down as... Tex Davis took it and moved it out to the 30-yard line. So it's first and 10 for Tennessee. Pat Shire's the tailback passing. Texas 16, Tennessee nothing. Here are the volunteers moving into single wing. Formation right, Morgan on the wing. Shires is in the tailback position. Ted Schwanger, the freshman fullback, in closer. Here's the snap taken by Schwanger. Spinning hits to the line. Can't go, and he's thrown for a loss on his own 28-yard line. Marvin Leith again through there. Marvin Leith, 6'1", 185-pounder, along with Howard Moon, 6'2", 195-pounder from Houston, Texas. So it's a loss of two. Ted Schwanger carrying on the spinner. It's second and 12. Fourth quarter, Texas leading 16 to nothing. Second down, 12. Here are the Vols moving this time into formation left. Pat Shire still deep. Schwanger the fullback. Morgan on the wing. Schwanger spinning, handing off to Shire. Goes to his left, looks, throws out to the left, and it is complete up to the 36 yard line. A beautiful catch. A beautiful circus catch by Ed Morgan, the wing back, up on the 36. Jack Barton came in to make the tackle. Wing back Ed Morgan from Hendersonville, North Carolina, made a circus catch up on the 36. So it is gain of eight yards on the play. It's going to be third and four. Jack Barton, one of the tri captains of Texas and defensive right halfback, who also calls the defensive signals, was the man who hit him. Tennessee still in Tennessee territory. Seven minutes, 32 seconds remaining to be played in the ball game. Formation right, Shires deep. Morgan on the wing, Schwanger the fullback. Texas shifting into a 7 4. Here is Shires looking. Can't get rid of it, being thrown on his own 31-yard line. The orange shirts of Texas again sifting through, led by Don Miller of Port Natchez, Texas. The spill Shires on the 31. Vic Kalinick was downfield, the man who would have been the primary receiver in that pass pattern. Ball is placed down, it's near the 32, so call it a loss of four. It's going to be fourth down and eight. Fourth and eight for Tennessee, and they have the ball on their own 32-yard line. Pat Shires in there at tailback. Bob Rayleigh goes into single safety for Texas. Back on his own 35. Shires kicking from his own 21. Deep punt formation. Gets the snap from center. Gets the boot away. A high spiraling kick coming across midfield. Rayleigh going back. Takes it on his own 25. Bobbles it on the 24. Has it now up to the 25, the 30. And it's spilled on the 34-yard line. Rayleigh returns to his own 34. So it's going to be first and 10. Roger Vest downfield to make the tackle. The offensive center for Tennessee along with John Michael. So it's first and 10. The ball is on the 34-yard line. Texas leading by a score of 16 to nothing. Texas Longhorns huddling near their own 25-yard line. Here they snap out of the huddle and up to the line, moving into T formation. T. Jones takes a look around. Tennessee in a 6-2-2-1 defense. Here's the ball taken by Jones. Slides left, hands off to Gibb Dawson. Moves across the 35 up to the 36-yard line. Bob Grace back in to make the tackle, so it's going to be second down and eight. Gain of two yards by Gibb Dawson. Texas great left halfback. This backfield, of course, of the University of Texas, one of the best balanced backfields in collegiate football. T. Jones, Gib Dawson, Dick Ochoa, and Billy Quinn. Tennessee in a 6-2-2-1 as Texas is up there in T formation, second and eight on their own 36. T. Jones in and under, gets the ball, slides right, hands off to Dick Ochoa. He hits across to the line of scrimmage, gets across to the 37. And Frank McCroskey came in to make the tackle. A pile up there. The referee places it down. It is uh, nearer the 38-yard line. So call it again at two, and it's going to be third down and six. Third and six for Texas, and they have the ball on their own 38-yard line. This is the 17th annual Cotton Bowl game played in the Cotton Bowl Stadium, which was built in 1930. 
TCU defeated Marquette in the first uh, Cotton Bowl game in 1937. Here's T. Jones sliding right, holds on to the ball, runs it on the option, holds on to it himself, moves out across the 40, down to the 45, and up to the 49-yard line. Ron Gus came in to make the tackle. Ron Gus came in to spill him as T. Jones, running the option to the right, held on to the ball, fell off the end, moved inside and up to the 49-yard line. And that's a first down for Texas. The Longhorns moving. First and 10 on their own 49. Four minutes, 55 seconds left to play in the ball game. Texas 16, Tennessee nothing. Texas now sending a flanker outside the left end, and that is Billy Quinn, who's coming five yards outside the left end. T. Jones gets the ball, holds on to it, wedges him out up the middle across the 50 down to the 49-yard line of Tennessee. Gain of two, Frank McCreskey made the tackle, so it's going to be second out and eight. Second and eight for Texas, and they have the ball on the Tennessee 49-yard line. T. Jones carrying the ball himself. Second down, eight. Ball on the the comeback kid, they 14, call him. T. Jones was the Southwest Conference leading total offense back with 1,299 yards for an average of 6.2 per play during this season. Texas up there now. Tennessee in a 6 2 2 1. Jones waits. Goes to a high county, gets the ball, comes left, hands off right to the line of scrimmage to Gib Dawson across the 40 and hit down right there at the 40 yard line. McCarsky in to make the tackle, and that's going to be. Another first down for Texas. First and 10 for the Longhorns as they move inside Tennessee territory to the 40-yard line. Incidentally, T. Jones, the quarterback who runs the offense, the man in the driver's seat for Texas, has his girlfriend right here at the ball game with him because she is a cheerleader, Marjorie Hargrove, who is right along the sideline. Texas first and 10, they have the ball on the 40-yard line. Coming out is Dick Ochoa. Coming out is Gib Dawson. And listen to the hand they get. Ochoa, Dawson, and Quinn. Quinn is now coming out of the ball game. Quinn has come out of the ball game, and Larry Graham is in at left half. Doug Cameron is in at fullback. Jimmy Pace is in at left half for the Texas Longhorns. T. Jones staying in there at quarterback. Larry Graham at left half. He's from Houston, Texas. Doug Cameron from San Sabah is in at fullback. And Jimmy Pace from Kennedy, Texas, who started the season as the regular right halfback. In there now. Jones gets the ball, slides left here to handoff. But it's going to Larry Graham, and he moves down to about the 41-yard line. Adams and Hensley in to make the tackle for Tennessee. So it is a loss of about a yard on the play. Second and 11. Second and 11 for Texas. Their backfield, T. Jones, Larry Graham, Doug Cameron, and Jimmy Dan Pace. Texas 16, Tennessee nothing. Three minutes, 17 seconds left to play in the ball game. Texas driving inside Tennessee ter- the territory. They're up there in T formation. Tennessee in a 6 2. Here's the ball taking his time, but T Jones fades and looks. Decides to run it. Can't go. Finally breaks away. Gets across the 40, down to the 35, and is finally dragged down on the 32 yard line. Hensley, Gust, and Adams finally brought him down. Jones, who was stopped twice before he finally broke away, carried it down to the 32, and a Tennessee man is shaken up on the play. A Tennessee man shaken up, trainer Mickey O'Brien, coming out of the field once again. Bunny Andrews is coming into the ball game for Texas, and that means that T. Jones will be coming out. Bunny Andrews is coming in. T. Jones comes out. Listen to the hand he gets. And T. Jones the Time is out on the field. On the last play, T. Jones carried the ball down to the 32-yard line, picked up nine, so when play is resumed, it'll be third and two. But right now, here's Bob Murphy. Well, there's no doubt at all, Lindsay, why these four lads that are the starters for Texas are all conference here in the Southwest Conference. They certainly all have distinguished themselves at all levels of play today. Uh, really a, a wonderful backfield, and they've played one of the best games, undoubtedly, of the year here today. As new as 1953 and number one in public demand, new low price at your Philco dealers beginning tomorrow is Philco's high-fidelity television with the golden grid tuner. Full 21-inch picture at a sensational new low price. See it at your Philco dealers. It's brand new. See it tomorrow. They're up to the line. All right, Lindsay. Texas set to go. Bunny Andrews is in and under. This time the handoff goes to the fullback. Doug Cameron hits in, carries it across the 30, and is piled up right there. Might have picked up enough for a first down. Tom Hensley in to make the tackle. Griesbach also in on the last play. It's a first down for Texas. First down and 10 yards to go, and they have the ball on their 30. And strangely enough, Bunny Andrews, who is in there running the Texas offense now at quarterback, went to school at Woodrow Wilson High School, which can be seen from our Philco broadcasting position here at the Cotton Bowl. Bunny Andrews, very close to home this afternoon, despite the fact that his team is from Austin, Texas. He gets the ball, slides to the right this time, hands it off to Jimmy Dan Pace. He hits across and moves for a gain of about two yards to the 28. 
Adams in to make the tackle, so it's going to be second down and eight yards to go. Second down and eight for Texas, and they have the ball on the Tennessee 28-yard line. Texas leading by...